Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcast, Episode 48, Rotor Talk Live, Xeno 2, Skydio 2, FAA Remote ID Updates. Cut that coming up next. The other night on Rotor Talk Live, I was joined by my co host, Ron Brown, and I was also joined by special guest co host, Lauren Donauer, substituting for Marcus Crawford, who was under the weather that evening. During the show, we ended up talking about the Xeno 2 and the delays regarding that. We also talked about the Skydio 2 and some updates regarding that. And we spent some time talking about the FAA Remote ID. Please note that Lauren had some difficulty with his microphone during the broadcast and portions of it were inaudible. I do want to apologize for that in advance. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and roll the broadcast in its entirety. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live Season 3, Episode 5, Xeno 2, uh, uh, Skydio 2, and FA Remote ID. Um, Marcus has the evening off tonight. He has been battling a cold and he's under weather. However, we have we have Mr. Ron Brown with us this evening, and we have Lauren all the way from nice and sunny Calgary. Uh, uh, am I wrong on that, Lauren? Well, uh, it, it's a little cool, but uh, other than that, you know, it was pretty sunny today. Oh, that's good. That's good. I won't tell you it was 77 degrees Fahrenheit down here in Florida today. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. Ron, how are you this evening? Uh, I'm well, Bill. I'm feeling good. And uh, it was a, a, a partly sunny, like uh, 55 down here at the Jersey Shore. And we never get that weather in the beginning of February. So wow. we were blessed today. And uh, I got out for a few minutes. I flew the Anafi for a few minutes today. Oh, wow. Very good. Yeah. So you were able to get out and, and, and enjoy the day. That's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, we got, believe it or not, we do have a lot to talk about tonight. I know, you know, things haven't been, there hasn't been a lot of stuff going on, but I managed to put together a pretty good show tonight. We have a lot, lot to talk about. Now I want to share, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And um, this just happens to be, to me, um, I don't know if the word bonehead would, would, would fit here or what. Pilot faces a year in federal prison for flying a drone during Super Bowl week, okay? As you are all aware of, the area around the stadium in Fort Lauderdale uh, was a TFR. It was a no-fly zone, and it was, I believe, for several days before uh, and I think a day after the Super Bowl. And a gentleman, um, he, uh, Jorgen Alondo ramos Terran of Weston could face up to one year in federal prison if he's convicted of flying his drone illegal in a no drone, no drone zone or TFR above Ocean Drive and A Street in South Beach in Miami, Florida. Um, I want to read what he act, he actually made it set a statement. Um, I want to see where that is. Just wanted to catch some uh, some of the festivities. Yeah, he said he wanted to catch some of the festivities there and. And now it said that the FBI wanted to capture some images of Super Bowl related festivities in South Beach. Um, he's scheduled for his first appearance for a federal magistrate judge last Friday afternoon. And if convicted, he'd face up to one year in prison. Uh, and apparently, I guess the, F the FBI has jurisdiction in this case, which is interesting. So, um, you know, I, I got to say, guys, I said that that happens to be probably the idiot, idiot post of the week. I mean, how how much more dumb can it get? You know what I'm saying? Ironically, last week, remember, I was joking with you on last week's show. I said, Bill, are you going to drive down to the Super Bowl in Miami and fly your drone? And remember, we joked about it last week, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, and some, um, I hate to classify, I won't say anything about the gentleman, but some, uh, what do you call, uh, misjudgment, uh, uh, the gentleman did. Well, first of all, my first thought is, Bill, what kind of drone was he flying? Because correct me if I'm wrong, if he'd had a DJI, a modern day DJI series drone, that drone would, wouldn't have even taken off in the TFR, right? I agree. It, it, yeah, that's a great point, Ron. He probably, I would say, he probably had an Evo. I mean, that, 
that, that that's the drone that comes to mind. I mean, because that doesn't have any, uh, um, you know, uh, geofencing on it. Or an Anafi. Or an Anafi, yeah. Or Zeno, yeah. I mean, whole, I mean, actually, anything but it, anything, anything but a uh, DJI prog, right? It, am I correct in that? No other drone maker ha- uh, stops you from taking off in uh, TFR. Is that correct? I. Yeah, but none, none that I know of. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, and we may see the others follow suit, but who knows? Well, I think unfortunately, I think they're going to make an example of him because, uh, and they're they're going to come down on him. Uh, whether he's, he, I don't think he'll face a year in prison, but I think he's going to get a pretty hefty fine, um, which is I think is is justified in this case because. This is broadcast. This is published. Everybody knows about it. Uh, it this is not a secret. And, um, you know, it's, it's like any time the, the president comes down there because Mar-a-Lago is down, is down around that area. It's the same thing. It's a TFR. And if your drone goes up there, it's fair game, okay? They're, they're going to find it, and they're, they're going to find you in short order. So um, – that's just uh, that. That's all I have to say on that. I, I just, uh, but, well, one more, but do, but do do we know how he was caught? Bill was no. And, was and he that's caught by real. a policeman, or was he reported by a uh, another citizen? Did we have any idea how he actually was? No, and, and that's that's an interesting thing, Ron. Uh, you know, I think they probably have um, the FBI probably has some type of localized radar um you know ground proximity kind of radar because that would be the only way to be able to f- see something like that under 400 feet because you know regular radar um you know a lot of times when jets get below a certain threshold they're landing at airports um it takes like their ground radar to be able to pick them up so um it, it had to take some kind of special radar to be able to find that uh, yeah um or, or again maybe a, a policeman just saw it or uh you know, maybe it wasn't even an FBI uh, thing. Yeah, it's more to the story that we'll probably never find out. And and not jump the subject, but did you see today? Drone DJ posted a story that some in some airport, uh, all air traffic was grounded today because somebody pilots reported seeing drone activity. I think it was in Madrid, Spain. Madrid, Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wow. Well, again, this is uncool. I mean, the pilots said they saw drones, but no drones were ever actually captured or is video evidence. There's no hard fact that these drones were there. I mean, I'm not saying they were or they weren't. I'm just saying right now it's just the pilot thought he saw some drones. Well, we're going to kind of switch gears here just a little bit, and I'm definitely going to want Lauren's input on this here. Um I want to share this article. Now I saw this article the other day and it was out four days ago and it's, it was on Fox news. Our packages from coronavirus hit China safe to handle. I mean, you know, we're all, um, you know, we're all waiting for our Xeno twos and, you know, obviously DJI and other drone manufacturers from Shenzhen um, as well here. And the gist of the article said, okay, the virus on materials they ordered, would not survive such a trip outside the body. We believe this virus only survives on an object minutes to an hour or so, not the days it takes your goods to travel the globe. Uh, uh, VP of uh, Foundation for Infectious Diseases. As always, after handling things, wash your hands before touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, uh, And it says, package from China takes at least three days to arrive in California. (coughs) Hang on a second. You want me to finish reading it, Bill? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ron. Uh, a package from China takes at least three days to arrive in California. The Denver Post citing UPS and FedEx estimates reported. Though scientists are still working to understand the Nouvelle virus is closely related to the SARS, which can live on surfaces for about two days, according to a 2003 University of Minnesota study. And we, we've even heard... So another sign say it only can last on packages for two or three hours. Okay. And, and, you know, and that's why I wanted to go ahead and, and share this. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Lauren? Yeah, um, well, on that, I think it, it, it's going to, uh, it's very, uh, you know, kind of fear-mongering stuff like that. 
and uh, I agree that uh, I don't think you're going to have an issue with package that uh, takes two or three days to arrive. Um, and not only that, but uh, DJI is, is more or less been shut down until the end of this month. And the latest news, they may extend that beyond the 10th to probably the 14th. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to. I was going to talk about that too, because, you know, last we had heard um, they extended the new year's holiday until I believe the ninth and people were going to be back on the 10th. But um, from what you're saying, you know, this may, they may extend it a little bit longer. Um, a lot of that uh, is based on, on how things are unfolding over there. Uh, as they said, they're, they're more or less uh, one kind of the of their employees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, this is something, this is something I think we should still probably be paying attention to. And, and I would say this, you know, um, you know, just be patient <laughs> that, that that's going to be, you know, above and beyond this, um, you know, think about, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with all those affected, especially in China, you know, and it's spread to some other countries. I know it's here, here in the United States. Um, and uh, they had a, the first death reported outside China was in the Philippines recently. So again, you know, this is something I think we need to need to you know remember everyone in our thoughts and prayers, and uh, hopefully this gets addressed and gets taken care of soon. Not just for you know you know not just for getting goods from China, but but just for for health sake, for everyone's sake. And um, you know, uh, again, you know, it's paramount. Um, you know. Um, you know, it's why people are covering their mat, covering their faces with masks and, um, you know, good hand washing and sanit sanitation practices. OK, we're going to kind of move on here. OK, and what we're going to do is, um, you know, the, you know, there, there's not been a lot of what I would call good news or great news coming out lately. But we actually are getting some good news about the Xeno, too. Um, it's actually gotten into the hands of several people. Um, you know, they are receiving these packages and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay. Now this was from our friend Bermuda, Bob, he got his. And this was from another gentleman who I subscribed to his channel. Um, he did a real quick, um, unboxing video with his uh, with his phone, which, which was real interest, which, which was great. Now there also have been, um, L3 toys has been cranking out a lot of videos lately. Um, Ron, I don't know if you saw the newest one up here. Um, the Xeno two range, eight kilometers. Did you see that one yet? I did not get a chance to see it yet. Um, it's actually the, the colors in it are, are fantastic. And, um, whoever the pilot is, he, he, he just pushes the outer edge of the envelope as far as battery life is concerned, um, you know, it's, it's having to, it, it forces itself to land because of the battery. So it's real, it's real interesting. But, you know, one of the things that I did notice in this, and I, I really, you know, it's, it's very good, is it really doesn't look like the horizon tilt issue is apparent in, in, in the last several videos that I've seen. Well, Bill, um, even Blue Skyver, he on one of his recent videos, he said he did a firmware update that helped fix the um, the, the tilted horizon, which it did in that video. And L3's horizon has always been better than Blue Skyver's, but if he performed the same horizon firmware update that Blue Skyver did, that probably accounts for it being, you know, it being, uh, you know, much better here. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, Blue Skyver's done a great job, but he's battling that snow and the dark, the dark days up in where he lives near Montreal where you know um L3 toys you know actually poor guy even though he's where it's warm he's been battling a lot of cloudy weather but two videos ago when he did the one where he was doing night and day but the first scene where he takes off and you see his local flag and the colors and detail and the flag that's kind of close to the camera you can see that this this has potential to be a uh, a very nice camera bill yeah, it really does look like that. Lauren, have you had a chance to look at any of these from the Xeno? The Xenos are a non-player up here in Canada. And I know there's been a few businesses that have tried to sell them. And 
there was just no interest at all. So this is kind of out of my real house. Okay. Um Ron, one of the things I really liked, and I don't know if you, you, you probably saw it on Blue Skyver's video, he fashioned some uh, homemade landing gear. Did you see that? I did, Bill. It was interesting that, that we have talked about the uh, puzzle why he doesn't use a, a landing pad in that snow. We always see his camera landing and taking off in the snow. Well, the, he, he's like did the uh, suspenders and belt in this video. He made the landing kit for it, which looked like he made it out of kind of toothpicks or, I mean, a, 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 what do you call popsicle sticks? But then he also used the landing pad. So he really has got protection now. Yeah, that, you know, it's so important, you know, and, 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 you know, as Rick Smith always says, it's so important to get that up, you know, whenever you're landing, because you don't want to get dust, dirt, debris, moisture inside, inside the, uh, the gimbal or the, or the camera. And, and that he, he did a great job with that. I, you know, and I, and I complimented on it. I said, that was very ingenious. I think he said he came up with the idea and he did that on a previous drone and he applied it here. And he said, the nice thing about using the, I think they were meat skewers. I don't know. But he said, you know, they're very light and weight, so it's not going to add any kind of weight as far as as far as the Xeno two. So that that was that was a good thing as well. Um, one of the other things that I want to go ahead and share is this, and I know this was um, actually posted um, out on my Xeno two group, and this was from a gentleman who had contacted Gearbest uh, customer service, um, and he wanted to know um, about the delay in shipping. And I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I'm going to Go up, uh, just read, read you the first little bit. There may be some delay in processing and shipping orders due to recent Chinese New Year's holidays extension. We'll be working around the clock to ship your item as soon as possible. We'll, we'll email you once it's sent out. Now, um, we apologize. The item listed below cannot be shipped out so fast. And it, it's talking about the Xeno 2. And then it gives him a couple of options here. Now, I didn't post it, but he did tell me he did get another response back. And he did say that they were telling, talking about February 5th, which is tomorrow, which is real interesting considering they're not going to be back from, uh, from their holiday till at least probably the 9th or the 10th. So um, you're going to kind of stay tuned on this, you know, and I thought that's kind of interesting. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Ron, was this. Uh, most of these people that have gotten their Xeno 2s, I think they ordered them on like the 13th or the 14th. You know, and I know you ordered yours on on the fourteenth, right? I I believe I'm the fifteenth, but th you bring uh, up a good point, Bill. It, it doesn't seem like they're going out of order. People are customers, and not, this is reviewers. This regular customers are receiving it, and then they're receiving before people who ordered before they ordered. So your order date doesn't seem to be correlate with with how you how it's being shipped out, which is. I guess, it, I mean, they never said they were going to do it that way, did they? But it, it seems kind of odd that they're not doing it that way. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's kind of reminiscent of Skydio because, you know, there was no rhyme or reason with Skydio and how they shipped orders out. And it kind of seems the same way here with Gearbest. I mean, there's just like no no rhyme, no reason. And, you know, um, because I know that I've, you know, and I've seen and I've asked them in comments and they posted, it's either been the 13th or the 14th that they've ordered them on. So, um, you know, that's something we're going to pay attention to. Right. And, you know, and I know somebody ordered in the 12th and they haven't received theirs yet. So, yeah, see, there uh, there yeah. you go. So, you know, it's like. And you, you mentioned Skydio. Yeah, Skydio did have some oddities where somebody, you know, that ordered later got there as first. And, but for the most part, the Skydio ones, I hate to say the most part, but in a lot of cases, the order date actually correlated with where you got the email and the ship date. Again, with exceptions, but this Hubsit thing seems to be not the exception, almost the rule that, uh, that there's no, uh, there's no ship order based on order date, which again, I don't know if they ever, ever promised that, but it just uh, kind of seems odd. And, um, you know, but, but like the good thing we said, regular customers are receiving what I like is regular customers are receiving them and they're not shipping all the early units out to reviewers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, you know, and I think that's a good thing here. So it's kind of like, you know, we'll just, we'll just kind of like stay tuned on this and, and keep apprised of this, but, but it's good. It's actually getting in hands of people and, you know, and I, and I've pinged several of them and I said, you know, please, you know, I don't know if they had um, YouTube channels or not. I said, let us know when you post some videos so we can be able to watch some of them because I'm real interested in, you know, I know blue skyver has been consistent. L3 toys has been consistent. But I'd like to see some from some of our other reviewers um, and, and get their take on things and to see how things are. So 
kind of stay tuned on that. It's exciting because, you know, I think, you know, we'll be seeing them sooner rather than later. Okay. Um, March probably, but you know, if it's any sooner, I think it's going to be a bonus as far as that's concerned. So, all right, we're going to kind of switch gears here and, um, you know, and, and I know uh, Marcus, unfortunately he's under the weather tonight, but, um, you know, and I know Lauren, you may know some about, um, Skydio too, but what I wanted to, what, what I kind of wanted to go over is this is, you know, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is everyone who has had a crash or some type of serious issue. Okay. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, either one of you, Ron, Ron or Lauren, um, it seems Skydio customer service has been on the spot and has replaced their drone. Am I right? Billy and Michael Barrington have both had uh, replacements. Yeah. And I know there was a uh, big time YouTube channels are not having anything to do with it. I can't say, but um, they were replaced and replaced in, in I'm going to say quick fashion. You know, and I know there was another gentleman early on um and I'm, I'm trying to remember he was landing he was getting ready to land his scotty and it just all of a sudden it just just boom and dropped and you know pretty much disintegrated they they did the same thing for him um there was another gentleman he was flying out of a dock um on a lake he was kind of doing doing like the the selfie uh the droney and um you know the, the gimbal was wobbling and he sent the he sent the video into them and the data into them they replaced it again. So, I mean, I got to hand it, hand it to them for their customer service. I think their customer service is very much spot on. Lauren, have you been following this at all? Yep. Uh, I was trying to get in there, get a word in edgewise, but yeah, you guys are right on top of it. Um, yeah, it's not unusual for a company like Skydio to, uh, to deal all over the uh, customer service, uh, especially at the beginning. Uh, the true test is going to be will they keep this up in the long term? Because this is new product, they, they really can't afford any such bad press. You know? so, so they've got to ensure that they're covering everything as soon as they can. Yeah, you know, um, you know, it's important, you know, and, and we kind of talked about it a little bit last week when we were talking about the Evo and I'll tell, you know, Every sale is important to them. Every sale is 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 key for them, and and I think um, I, I got to hand it to Skydio because they're staying on top of this situation. They're addressing it, and um, I wanted to get your input on this too, Ron. You know, I know you know, I know you used the Beacon once. I think I believe, and you know, you kind of meh were, you, were your results. Am I am I right on that? Yes, uh, I've only tried to beak it one time, and um, m most of the issues are probably just you know me inexperienced. I mean, I did watch study Billy's video when I went out, but uh, I had problems with it. I, I probably wasted half the battery just having it find me. Now, I first let me say when it can't find you, hit the red button, but I didn't know that at the time. But I, I wasted half the battery before it finally found me, and th then it, then it did well. Except the, you know, when I tried to land it, like it, it, it like it. It didn't land like where I thought it was going to land. Again, these are mostly just probably user issues to me. And and I, and unlike I'm going to be the person that doesn't, you know, nobody says this stuff, but I love the controller so much now that I haven't used the beacon again just because it works so darn well with that controller that, uh, you know, I don't have a electric, but I don't have a bicycle, a motor bike, a electric skateboard. I don't have anything anyways that, you know, they're doing a great beacon following test on. So, um, I just prefer using the control, but I, I will use the beacon more once my weather gets better. And let me throw this in real fast. I know some Billy's video when he um, when he had a dump in the water. Him, I know, you know, right before it dumped in the water when it was caught in the trees that he went to retrieve it. You could see on this, his screen recording it lost connection to the beacon right before it did that dump. And, and I have a feeling maybe that had something to do with it. That it, that it said he probably is only connected to his phone at that point. And who knows, maybe he hit something on his phone that made it do that because he wasn't aware that the beacon wasn't connected. I, again, I, I, I'm just watched the video a couple of times. It just, just a thought. Yeah, I know. I, I same thing. I, I, same as same here, Ron, I watched his video a couple of times as well. And, you know, I really couldn't, couldn't see anything definitive as far as, as far as what this is. And, you know, it, let me, let me say real fast, but all I can say is 
I, I, one time I was flying to Skydo and it was kind of too cold and I kept losing connection. I lost connection three times in a row. I mean, I'd fly two minutes, lose connection. It came back and perfectly like was ready to land right over my head. It won't come all the way to the ground. So you have to bring it down to the last couple of feet. But it, it returned when it loses connection to the controller, at least it, 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 it returns right, right over your head perfectly every time. That's good. That's real uh, good. Well, I know Ken. Go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, well, I'm, I don't know if you've seen the latest update on Billy Kyle, but Radio uh, has evaluated his drone and said it was a different addition with the drone. So they're, they're, they're replacing it uh, with ASAP. That's fantastic. That, that yeah. That's definitely some great news. And, um, you know, I like I said, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with their customer service. And I you know I talked to a number of people now. Ron, I don't know if you know um, David Kluge. Um, yeah. You know, he had his accident down in Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, did they? Are they sending him another one? You know, I, I haven't been kept up on that story. I, I don't know. I hate to say one way or the other because I, I think I knew at one point, but I think I've forgotten. Yeah, I know um, because I, 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 I regularly chat with him on um, on Twitter and, you know, I didn't hear the, the, the resolution of that. So um, I'm real, real interested to kind of find out to see if, if they if they replace that as well, too, because I know, um, you know, he was flying when it was kind of like near dusk. And, you know, a lot of people were, were saying, you know, they they might not honor it because of that. But um, we'll find out as far as that's concerned, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, I guess in the long run here, as far as Skydio is concerned, um, you know, I'll call it growing pains. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say here. Um, you know, I think one of the things we probably also have to realize too is, you know, when we're looking at drones made over in China, you know, and, and I'll, and I'll say DJI, I'll even say Hubson and I'll say Autel because I know they're all made there. Um, you know, they're done in a factory setting. And, you know, we got a glimpse of the factory setting once in that video that was accidentally taken from that Mavic Air. I think probably a lot of people saw that. And, and it's a very automated process. It's, it's very, you know, there's a lot, there is human intervention, but a lot of it's automated. Um, you know, with the Skydio, a lot of it is very human. It's very hands-on, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, you know, they don't crank out the units, say like a DJI or a Hubson or Autel or others do over in China because they have the factories built for them. And, you know, Skydio's factory is, you know, it's, it's one person after the next, after the next that are working on them individually at, the, at, their, at their stations and just, you know, getting parts and, and assembling them. So, um, you know, it's a different kind of a process. But I think I think you know I think they're growing I think they're evolving I think they're learning um, you know they're doing very well with their customer service they're staying on top of things you know they're, they're looking at things they've been very responsive now you know a lot of you remember I had one on order and I canceled it you know and I still feel that I made the right decision as far as canceling it is concerned but um, you know what I'm seeing here is 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 I'm seeing them working with customers taking care of them, addressing their needs and getting back to them. I think one of the things that's really also impressed me too with Scottio is, is their response has not, you know, it's not been like, oh, we'll get back to you later. They talk to you right then, right there. They address it. Um, you know, if we can't, you know, give us the information, you know, we'll look at it and we'll get back to you. And they do get back to you in short order, and which they did with Billy, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So, um, you know, kudos to them for that. I think this is a good thing. Um, you know, we got much more to come on this, but, um, you know, all in all, I, I think Skydio is doing a great job. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, some great things from them. Um, you know, what I've seen, the videos I've seen from them has been fantastic. I think the only weak point to me, and I know I talked to Ken Dono a little bit, Ron, is, is the controller. Um, he wishes that they would have put a better controller together than the, than the one they got from Parrot. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, that, that's a common complaint. I mean, I I, I had the Paranafi for you know a year before I got the um, the Scadio, so I mean I'm used to the controller, uh, and I don't know if they I think they mean everything, but you know as far as the aerodynamics of it or whatever, you know I have no problems. with it. I could jump the controller to control and control. I know you know the the big DJI fanboys they love that controller, and it's a great controller. Don't get me wrong, but I mean I I could jump to different controllers. It, it doesn't affect my 
flying that much. But I think and, and maybe the big thing is they think that the weak transmission signal of the Scuddy is due to the controller because the, the uh, Nafi also doesn't have great signal strength and range. So they're blaming that in the controller. Now, I'm not an engineer enough to know if it is or it isn't or whatever. I know Michael Barrington has done mods to uh, the Anafi style controller for the uh, Skydio. And I think he's he's got some better range with it. But uh, but as far as from aeronautics standpoint of using it, I have no problems with the sticks and the buttons, whatever. In fact, I like that little paddle wheel better than the spin wheel on the um, on, on most drones. So um, that's my two cents on it. But uh, again, I'm I probably fly more different types of drones and a lot of guys do who mostly fly DJI. So puts me in a different, like, you know, kind of a uh, mindset. Well, you know, well, the Skydio, you know, everybody's got to remember, this is just kind of a new drone. And they're, they're kind of taking it beyond what we normally know drones are. They're going to have a few glitches along the way. And, and I think uh, a lot of those glitches could be just, you know, with firmware up yeah yeah you know um and, and i and i th- and i think we're gonna you know we're, we're gonna see we're gonna see some good things from skydio um so you know kind of stay tuned from them you know i know one of the other things that I want to want to wrap up was um, I do remember early on when um, Ken Donna was flying with Michael Barrington, and this was before they added telemetry onto the app. And uh, Michael was actually doing a chase in his Mavic 2 Pro um, as Ken went out there, and um, you know Ken was trying to test the range. And this was before you know any mods or anything. And you know the st- range on the stock is just is just atrocious. He said he said it is just absolutely positively atrocious so you know that's that's where we're at with that okay we're going to kind of switch gears here a little bit um there has been um some more in more talk regarding um um the faa remote id and one of the things that i wanted to go ahead and share and i'll get it up on the screen right now um after delaying remote id for drones three times faa denies request to extend commenting period now, there were a number of people who wrote the FAA in a letter, and this was from article from Joan DJ, and I'll definitely drop a link in the description so you guys can go ahead and check this out. Um, but um, um, you can see that there, there's quite a few people here. And what's real interesting is um, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, um, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association um, um, in here, the... Um, Um, Vice President Advocacy and Safety Experimental Aircraft Association. Um, They were asking for an extension for the commenting period for remote ID. And um, it was, it was denied by the FAA. Um, They really, they, and and what was interesting was, uh, therefore your request to extend the comment period is, is denied. The comment period for NPRM closes on Monday, March 2nd, 2020. Uh, Brandon Roberts, acting executive director, office of rulemaking. So, you know, that's not going to happen. That, that's been kind of kind of shut down as far as far as that's concerned. Now, the other thing that I wanted to share was this. Um, let me see if I can get this up on here. OK, um, right now. Now, these are uh, this is the section where all the comments are. And you can see right here. Um, I, there's a number here. Eight thousand nine hundred and ninety four. Um, people have commented on this and results of 50 per page. And you can take a look and, you know, some people have chosen to say anonymous for their last name. Others haven't. And, um, you know, definitely, (coughs) excuse me, definitely kind of look at this at your leisure here. Now, one of the interesting things about all this, and and this is kind of what I, what I wanted to talk about was, was the denial from the FAA on this extension here. Now, uh, you know, their, their purpose in the organizations that asked for it, it's Academy of Model Aeronautics, um, you know, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. Um, it's real interesting to see who was asking for this extension, because I think um, they were starting a grassroots movement, grassroots movement, um, if I'm not mistaken, to try to get hundreds, if not thousands of more people 
to be able to contribute on, on this. I want to interested to hear both of your guys' takes on this. Ron, what's your thoughts? Um, you know, uh, it, it's I don't really have a strong thought on this. I, you know, I guess three months, nine days is, uh, you know, is a generous time period to to comment. Um, you know, I guess, you know, they 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 have a whole timeline. They probably, you know, had a comment process, and then they probably had another process, a, a time or a timeline for them to process, you know, the actual comments and and be able to, um, you know, learn anything from the comments or make any. Uh, you know, uh, corrections to the uh, proposed rules. So probably everything's on a timeline. So if they delayed, if they extend the comment period, that would probably put every other piece of the puzzle on a delay. So um, I, again, I, I don't think this is to shut people up. I, I think three months was a generous time period. I, believe me, I'm not back in the, you know, the FFA. I might, again, I'm not even totally on the FFA. I think this is being sent down from the politicians to the FFA, the politicians have been bought and sold by the big companies that plan on delivering things with the drones or whatever. I think the FFA is somewhat a pawn in this whole mess, but um, anyhow, that's my thoughts, Bill. Well, you know, one of the things, and you guys know Brendan Schulman, he's the vice president of um, legal and policy affairs for DJI and, um, you know, read his, you know, file, I'll call it his DJI's response to remote ID and, um, you know, and, and I agree with with what with basically what he said is, you know, that some form of remote ID is needed. However, what um, the federal government has proposed, um, you know, basically experts are, are pretty much universally agreed that, you know, it's on paper on paper. It looks good. But in reality, it will never work. It's just one. Of, it's just one of those type of things. Um, you know, I've even heard some other drone channels in there's one that it's a large show channel and they have um, talk shows on um, quite a bit. And there's two gentlemen on there. Um, they're even saying to the point that this, uh, what the FAA has proposed is illegal um, that they can't do this because a lot of it talks about invasion of privacy. Um, you know, it, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, some people are saying, you know, agree with, you know, for law enforcement to have it is one thing, but for private citizens to have access to this data is, is, is another, um, you know, and the way the system is set up, um, I, I heard a comment the other day. Um, it's, it's something like the, uh, CEO at Kitty Hawk is kind of licking his chops because it would just mean an incredible revenue stream for their company. Um, that, that it would just, it would just, it would just come in, money would come in unabated, um, to, to them. So I mean, you know, Bill, it's, it's, it's very likely that this proposal was not written by a member of the FFA and more likely it's written by a, a, a Washington lobbyist. And that's why so much stuff in there that, that, that doesn't seem right because it's somebody that doesn't know anything about drones, airplanes. It's again, it's just a suit who, who's a highly paid Washington lobbyist who wrote from no, no knowledge of aeronautics at all. Yeah. I think it, it was hastily put together. Um, it was done from the standpoint of um, a business type of a standpoint. Um, you know, probably someone, along the lines with Kitty Hawk or, or aligned with some services like that, because they're the ones that are going to end up making money in a deal like this is the way it's the way it's on paper right now and the way it looks. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things um, that I wanted to say. The other thing that I really wanted to comment on was the commenting period itself. Okay. We have, it's, it's officially less than a month right now. Um, I personally think it's fine. I'm going to be spending some time, probably in the next weekend or two, um, typing mine up and getting it out. Um, one of the things that I would advise against um, is going and using some of these templates that people are, are putting out there. I know the Academy of Model Aeronautics, which I'm a member of, has put several templates out there for their members to use. And encourage, they're encouraging them to use it, but encouraging them to personalize it as well. And I'm like, okay, if you're using a template with the same words, but personalizing it, it's still a template. You're still basically using using those kind of words. And I know the FAA is looking for things like that when they're looking through and reviewing through these comments. So 
um, you know, my, my word of caution with commenting is, um, you know, try to avoid, try to avoid this. And the other thing that I would highly recommend when you're commenting is this, is to go ahead, you know, just, you know, don't number one, a couple, a couple pieces of advice here. Don't go out there and say, this sucks. I don't want, I don't, I don't want it. Uh, it'll prevent me from flying my, my drone. It'll ruin my hobby signed, you know, um, John Doe. Okay. Don't go out there and say something like that. Do go out there and say, hi, my name is Bill, the drone reviewer. Um, you know, I have a, have a drone channel. Um, I try to educate people on aspects of, of, you know, not only as a hobbyist, but as, as professionals, um, you know, I feel that the remote ID is wrong because of, and then, you know, and then, and then list some things out, you know, kind of give some background to it, but don't give them a book. Okay. Because, you know, that's the other thing that I think will kind of turn them off is if you go out there and you just, and you just start typing ad nauseum with this, it's going to go, it, it's, it's not going to look good. It really, it will absolutely positively not look good at this. So, um, uh, my, my big question is, uh, will they, will they even read or do anything with these comments? Uh, you know, that's a good question, Ron. That's a very good question. No, no, and I, I'm, I'm just saying that in jest, uh, go ahead and, and leave your comment. Exactly. Like Bill said, I just hope that when the comments come in, cause I've read already some high percentage of these comments, or you know, uh, negative or whatever to the new proposals, which we which we knew. But I mean, I I, I just wonder how much that'll factor in. Like, well, if, if the comments are ninety percent negative to these new rules, well, that would somebody actually say, okay, well, we we've, we've got to change all this stuff because look at all these comments. Or would somebody go, uh, you know, well, yeah, they don't like it, but we're gonna do it anyways. That, that that's what I'm interested in, and I'm not saying one way or the other, but I'm I'm hoping for the the uh, the you know the the good comments you know the you know uh make them actually rethink this and back off a little bit but uh maybe i'm being the optimist mm. yeah i drawn because uh we came uh up with me going off the end of as a gym last year and uh you know we had a pretty long process that uh feedback and they, they went out and had kind of come home meetings throughout Canada, and I was part of that. And, uh, I was actually very impressed with our new role models, despite what some of the uh, people might say, but we actually have the, uh, better flying conditions now than what we did. Now it's because they actually look, now, whether the FAA is going to look into what is actually written into them, who knows, that's time to tell. But, the thing being is, is to make your comments and make them understand that all the wonderful things you're doing with your drone that you won't be able to do if they open it. Yeah, you know, and 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 I and I think one of the things um, that people need to be aware of I, again, you know, this isn't whatever happens is not going to happen overnight. This is something that's going to take some time. Um, probably like a minimum of two to three years. And personally, you know, what I think is probably going to end up happening is something along the lines of what DJI has proposed, because, um, you know, what Brendan Schulman had, had typed up, I really, really like, I, I think it's, I think it's absolutely, um, spot on. It, you, it leverages existing technology. Um, you know, it, it won't, it won't be a burden. See, the, the bird, the way the current rule is written, it's going to place a large part of the burden on the hobbyists and on and on and on, on the pilots. And the way um, the proposal from DJI, it's exactly the opposite. The burden is not on the pilots. The burden is equally shared. And you know, you won't have to subscribe to a service. And and, and I think that's that's important as well too. Um, one of the other things that I kind of want to, um, you know, touch on before we kind of wrap things up tonight, um, you know, I know I saw some articles today about commercial drone delivery, um, you know, and in fact, let me go ahead and I'm going to bring that article up here. Um, you know, it was on, it was on drone DJ. Let me, uh, give me a second here and let me, um, FAA proposes to certify specific drones for package deliveries. And let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and share that here. 
it's funny, when I read that article today, the first thing that kind of came to my mind was the fact that uh, that's why the remote make ID is coming in to make way for those. And yeah, that's uh, that's right. And and you can see here, this is Zipline, and there's a package with a parachute on it. On uh, Monday, Bill, the Bill, Bill, is that my Zeno two getting delivered? I uh, could be, Ron. On Monday, the FAA um, proposed new safety standards for specific drones for package deliveries in the Federal Register. This move is seen as a crucial step in allowing routine package deliveries by drones in the not too distant future. The proposed certification of specific drone packages deliveries is a big win for companies like Wing Aviation, which is actually Google, Amazon, UPS, Zipline, and other companies that are looking to use drones to deliver packages. The proposal is the first time the FAA has presented a formal policy plan to make sure the drones use package deliveries will meet certain safety and airworthiness requirements. Um, similar to the FAA's, um, what we just talked about for remote ID for drones, the agency is requesting the public to provide feedback and comments on the proposal to certify specific drones for package deliveries on or before a March 4th deadline. Uh, the goal of this latest FAA proposal is to certify specific drones for parcel delivery as a special class of aircraft in similar ways as other manned aircraft, such as airliners, helicopters, and small private planes are treated. And I'll drop a link in the description for that. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Ron? Well, you know, the, the, these rules may be good for the big delivery companies, but are these rules good for the uh, hobbyist flyers like us, Bill? You know, I, that's that's where I think it's coming into play. It's because it's going to hit the hobbyists like us. It's going to it's going to hit it's going to hit us square on. And, you know, um, you know, when you and I want to go up and, and, and shoot, you know, a beach scene or Lauren's out, you know, uh, photographing some things out in the country and and being able to to catch some things you know this is going to affect us this this is going to be yeah. you know and it shouldn't really affect us because uh nobody's delivering a package at the beach or beach or out in the country or the rural areas or whatever we're being held down by rules that again you did and, and rank the beach by the abandoned pier there's no package <laughs> ever going to be delivered there yeah <laughs> you know, um most of us I, 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 I hate to say most of us, but a lot of us, we're not flying right in front of our houses where the package is going to be delivered. You know, unless I'm just testing something out, what kind of video am I going to get flying in front of my house? I probably have the, you know, uh, uh, you know, a thousand clips of flying in front of my house. I, I, I don't fly in front of my house unless I'm just maybe testing something out real quick. So, I, 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 you know, again, I don't fly where a package would be delivered. So, um but uh, yeah, but these these new rules for it's just more more rules being put in for the the big companies with the big lobbies. I'm sorry, I sound like a, a conspiracy theory guy here. Maybe I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Let's put it that way, Bill. And as far as Gump is saying, that's all I have to say on the subject. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Lauren? Yeah, uh, I totally agree with Ron. You know, like having this uh, 24-hour communication. When you're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, that's a burst. It's, it's absolutely crazy because even if you have uh, communication, for what? You're the only person around for miles. Like, why would you need this? Yeah. Yeah. Open centers, maybe, but, uh, but realistically, there's, most people are not flying in open centers. Last yeah. Time, nobody was dropping stuff on the doorstep out in the Rocky Mountains, you know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, gentlemen, I think we're we're at the end the end here, and kind of want to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, you know what we normally do, Lauren. You know, you you watch the show. Um, want to get some closing thoughts from Lauren first, and then uh, and then Ron, and then and then I'll finish things out tonight. The FAA with their uh, with their timeline on, on trying to uh, have people respond to it. It would be nice for them to extend it. And my honest opinion is, uh, big business is, is shutting it down so they can get in there too. That's that's my opinion. Ron? 
Sounds good. Um, Ron? Um, you know, um, again, we, we cover a lot of good topics tonight. The, you know, the FFA uh, stuff is always, you know, uh, kind of bad news, I think, for us. But we definitely need to stay on top of it and keep commenting, not only on the uh, official FFA website for comments, but, you know, on all your social media. Just, you know, just keep pounding on Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, uh, YouTube, any any social media sites that, uh, you know, there's problems with these new FFA roles and they need to, you know, adjust these. I mean, I realize we have to implement some type of new rules to allow this future, which is probably further off than they think with the package deliveries, but um, it has to be more workable for the uh, the hobbyists and, uh, and also the uh, commercial en- entities and, uh, yeah, and you know the the we covered the virus o- over in China, which is you know it's a very serious subject, went well beyond drones. But I, I think when your Xeno two arrives, you don't have to worry about getting a, a sick from it, from what all the experts told us. So um, yeah, I just want to uh, thank Lauren for being on with us tonight, uh, uh, sitting in for Marcus. It was great to have him on the show. We need to get him on back again, especially when he he gets his mic set up going again. Apologies to the sound quality tonight, but we'll, don't worry, we'll get a fix from the next episode. And um, Bill, just one last thing I want to present to you before we wrap out. I was watching a Super Bowl Sunday and before the game started, they had the hundred greatest players of all time on that field. Uh, how is Terry Bradshaw not one of the hundred greatest players in NFL history? I agree. I agree a hundred percent, Ron. Yeah. A hundred percent. I do those four Super Bowls from the seventies not count anymore? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, what they had, Elway was there, Montana was there, um, Roger Staubach was there. Um, who who were the other quarterbacks um, that were there? Dan Marino was there. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. Okay, as great a quarterback as he was, he never won a Super Bowl. Um, you know, Brett, Brett Favre won Brett, one. Brett Favre, I think. One. I think Brady was there too. Well, we, well, we're not going there as far as Super Bowls. Yeah, we're not going to go there. <laughs> we, 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 we won't <laughs> no, go nobody, there. nobody, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Brady, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody that's sitting there. I'm just, I'm just asking the question: How's how if if you're if you're the same age as Bill and I, if you're in your 60s and you grew up watching the Steelers in the 70s, how is Terry Bradshaw? I, I mean, I know it was a different era; they ran the ball more, but those big Super Bowls, especially the games where he beat like. Dallas when they when they beat Dallas twice Super Bowl both those games if it wouldn't have been a big uh, Bradshaw the Swan pass in either games they wouldn't have won those games absolutely yeah Bradshaw making the big plays the Swan in the Super Bowl that basically won two Super Bowls for the Steelers now they handled Minnesota easily but even the Ram game they needed stuff from uh, it was Stallworth in that game Stallworth yeah Stallworth they, made they, those they two catches yeah Bradshaw at the end of the game the Stallworth so it's not like they just showed up in these Super Bowls and it's still curtain shut everybody out. Bradshaw made plays, big plays in three of those four Super Bowls. He did. And remember, this is in the days before there were offensive coordinators, um, you know, calling the plays in in their helmet. Bradshaw called all his own plays. I mean, it was it was, it was straight up. It was 100% straight up about and it that. Was, and it was no roughing the quarterback rule yet. Oh, yeah. That didn't that didn't exist. I mean, they yeah, there were no – somebody said there were no skirts on the quarterback. So, <laughs> as far as that's concerned. Jack Lambert said that, I think. Jack Lambert said that, absolutely. Um, I want to thank Lauren for for, for uh, stopping by tonight. Um, you know, as, as I said, you know, Marcus was under the weather. You know, we hope you're feeling better, Marcus. Um, you know, thank you for letting me know um, um, as, far, as far as that's concerned. Um, you know, we covered a lot of good topics tonight. We talked about the Xeno 2, we, um, you know, and since – good news of some people getting them and you know hopefully you know we'll hear some news probably in the next week or two um we're seeing a lot more videos coming out which are great and i'm anxious to, to get see some more of those um you know we talked some more about sky do2 and we got to take a look at um some of the um you know ron from firsthand experience has talked about that you know we've seen how good their customer service has been and how responsive they've been and you know th- that's a great thing you know we're real we're real, we're real thankful about that. Um, you know, and you know, we, we finished up talking about FA remote ID. Um, you know, the extension was denied, um, as far as that's concerned, but you know, the thing again is, you know, please make sure you get out there and comment and, you know, put, put it, put it in, in some great wording of your own when you do that. So, you know, with everything else is said, you know, 
Um, want to thank everyone for showing up tonight. And as always, it's a great day to fly. Take care, everybody.